Hello and assalamu alaikum. This year we are celebrating 70 years of Pakistan-German diplomatic relations. And this interview is a part of a series of interviews with renowned Pakistani-German personalities. I will be your host for this interview on behalf of the Goethe Institute Pakistan and the Pash Initiative. My name is Abdullah Ahmed and I'm a Pash alumni from Karachi. And I've been associated with the German language for the last eight years. I'm currently studying at a private medical university, that too in Karachi. Today we have Dr. Asfa Akhtar, the Vice President of the Biology and Medicine Section at the Max Planck Society in Germany. Herzlich Welcome and a very warm welcome to you, Dr. Akhtar. And thank you for taking out your precious time for this interview. Dr. Akhtar is a renowned scientist and recently was awarded the very exclusive Leibniz Prize. Yeah, so first of all, thank you very much for this very nice invitation and I'm looking very much forward to uh, discussing with you. Um, so, um, you know, I was born in Karachi, so, um, and uh, have, I did also my, basically my uh, early education there uh, and followed by um, basically um, very early on, we moved to different countries. For example, we went to United Arab Emirates, then moved back to Karachi again, then moved to Paris. This is where my family right now resides. So I have been exposed to very many different cultures uh, in the meantime. And during the university time, I moved to the UK. Uh, since in all uh, the stages of my, my earlier uh, kind of development, I was always going through the English system of education. So it was much easier to go to university um, in, in the UK. So I was in London. Uh, this is where I did then my university and then my PhD. And so in, this is in a nutshell, my educational career uh, in different countries. So what is your area of interest when it comes to research? And is that what your PhD is in? Yeah, so I'm very interested in, in uh, really trying to understand how our body works and how, for example, from starting from a single cell that we all start, we can actually differentiate into a, a compendium of very many different organs with very specialized uh, functions. So how exactly the same genetic material in our cells can be interpreted differently uh, is fascinating. And this is an area uh, of research that is very broadly known as the area of epigenetics. Um, and that's what I'm trying to understand how environmental influences, but also components within our cells uh, generate this plasticity, yet also stability uh, to be able to enable different functions in the cell. So what made you develop an interest in such an interesting and broad field like of epigenetics? Yeah, so I was studying biology at the university. So that's, that's how I, I became uh, interested in, uh, you know, I was always interested in biology, but, you know, really trying to understand the molecular mechanism was really where, when I was doing A-levels and further uh, doing my bachelor's degree, that, that I thought that it was very interesting to, get, to go into the nitty gritty details of how things function. Um, so that really initiated my interest, uh, but also what was really nice was to do these interim projects uh, in the labs during the course of my, uh, my university and, and, you know, doing experiments were, was very exciting because you didn't know what the outcome will be. And that's when I thought, okay, I need to go into this direction of research. Um, and that's how then I applied for PhDs and, and, and never looked back since then. I think that's one of the most exciting uh, Kind of jobs to have because it's ever changing and you don't know what you're going to get out of it so you are always have uh you know a, a lot of curiosity and excitement uh, it's never boring in research so did you always want to pursue a career as a child to become a scientist or researcher or study epigenetics or did you want to study something else and you switch midway yeah i mean you know uh, maybe it's it's cliche but but uh Right at the beginning, I wanted to um, to do medicine because I didn't know anything else, uh, and that's what uh, you know. The, the environment was very conducive to whether you become a, a a doctor or not, or a lawyer or not. Like you know, some of these classical jobs that that people can associate with uh, as a child. Um, but as I went into, as I said, um, into you know, I got more deeper knowledge um, into the different subjects. What I was really very much interested in is how things work. Um, how, what are the molecular mechanisms? Because you, can, you cannot 
heal people without knowing what is exactly happening in our body and that's where my focus is is lying um so it's it's not that you know i, I woke up as a five-year-old thinking yeah i'm going to do epigenetic research no i didn't have a clue <laughs> but uh but i definitely wanted to do something i, I just couldn't see myself um just sitting at home this i never could could imagine <laughs> and and but how you know my path will um develop was was unknown and and you know step by step you you go into different steps and see whether how you're doing and take the next steps according to your previous successes and that's what i've i've done so can you tell us a bit more about the marx planck society so our viewers can know how big of a role you're playing in the field of science yeah you know max planck society is really an outstanding organization um that uh really um favors uh, or acknowledges importance of basic fundamental research i think it's it's very important to uh, to understand how basic principles of biology but also other uh, topics we have many different sections um, is done because only then we can understand what's happening really in the in the bigger world so the the um, the aim of of max planck society is really to promote outstanding uh, excellent research this is basically the key with which we operate and, and also it's it's really about the people rather than programs so we really identify top people that are um, are absolutely outstanding in their particular area of research and provide them with the possibility to do research without really um, micromanaging them and that's really um, really wonderful and a unique opportunity that it doesn't exist really um, with this autonomy anywhere else in the world so how did it feel of not just becoming the first Pakistani, but also the first international and also the first woman vice president of the biology and medical medicine section of the Max Planck Society? And when joining Max Planck, did you know you would go so up the ladder? No, of course not. Yeah. <laughs> so of course I didn't I didn't expect that that I'll become the international vice president. By the way, there was uh, there was there were also other uh, vice presidents before an international vice president. Uh, before me, but not a female international vice president. Uh, okay. And of course, it's it's a uh, it's a superb job, a job with a lot of responsibility, um, which I take of course very seriously. And uh, it's very exciting because it it uh, basically gives me the possibility to shape the shape the society, contribute towards shaping that the society. Um, and just generally, uh, diversity is is very healthy in any organization. So uh, I think that that angle to bring in gender diversity and issues related just generally to gender diversity um, is, is fantastic. And I'm very happy to be contributing towards that. So what is your advice like Pakistani women who would like to pursue professional careers, but cannot due to certain societal expectations and pressures? Yeah, I think go for it. I think, you know, giving up is not an option. I think one needs to, uh, we need role models and we need more women to come forward to be able to address this. And actually, I personally think that this, this large family um, uh, kind of culture that we have uh, in Pakistan actually should enable more women to go to work because you have your nana nani, dada dadi that are, are present helping, uh, you know, in, in big, bigger family con uh, constellations uh, to be able to take care of childcare issues that normally in European uh, societies is much more difficult. Uh, so in principle, it should be easier than more difficult. But what we find is, is the contrary. And um, I think one needs to find very good ways to show that it, should, that, that it is possible and it is definitely doable. And it is also very healthy uh, for both men and women. And of course, if they want to pursue your career because you don't want um, that later on in life you are frustrated because you wanted to achieve something and you didn't and i think that's important that more examples we have um you know the more it will be acceptable you won the liveness prize which is a very exclusive award so i can you tell us a bit about that and how did you feel when you were awarded it yeah of course you can imagine i was like extremely happy to be given this award and it's actually a great honor and privilege to get this award it's the the highest award that you can get via the the german uh from the german research foundation um and uh, gives you really a, a lot of flexibility it, it's it's purely dedicated for research 
So the, the funding that you get uh, enables you to be able to, uh, 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 to do research uh, very flexibly without any ties attached. And this is really very helpful, especially in the area that I'm working on. Um, the, you know, the experiments we do are very expensive. So we are always on the lookout for, for additional funds. And, um, and, and just really the credibility and the acknowledgement that people appreciate the work you have done uh, was very rewarding. And especially for people in my lab, um, we celebrated with uh, lots of cakes and uh, cookies and stuff like this, uh, because it's obviously it's an acknowledgement for their work. So it, it really, um, for me, it's, it's really the, the team that, that deserves to celebrate this this prize rather than me alone, because without them, uh, it will not work out. So why should young Pakistani students consider a higher education and a career in a competitive field like science in Germany? Yeah, I think it's, first of all, I think it's, it's really an ideal job, at least for me, because you have a lot of flexibility. To, to kind of go in, in, when you go in the research direction, you don't know exactly wh where you're going to end up. So that by itself on the one side may bring some anxiety, but it brings a lot of excitement because you're going where nobody has gone before. So by itself, it's, it's very exciting. Um, and of course, you know, the uh, res career in research or academia prepares you for many other jobs later on as well. Of course, if everything goes well, you can follow a career path but the way to approach how to think, how to think about doing the right controls, putting things in the right context prepares you for many uh, areas to do systematic thinking. So I think this is falling on, going deeper into, into this, this, this line of research prepares you for many other things, just not uh, academic career. Why do we do this in Germany? I mean, many countries in the world are doing outstanding research, but, but Germany is very much interested in, in, in seeing really research as the future. And I think that's why they have also invested, um, you know, over the, the last few years, really uh, heavily into science and education, which of course pays off because science is the future. If we understand many things better, we will be able to solve many of the problems better. So, um, you know, I would highly encourage people to, um, to use these opportunities if you have. But of course, I think, you know, a, a healthy uh, situation will be where you basically have people coming and going come you know from Pakistan to, to to Germany and vice versa so that you can also go and populate back what you have learned and have this exchange um, is very healthy internationally as well not just Germany specific with that being said doctor after do you have any last parting words my message to the to the young scientists is really don't give up uh, if you know if you have to struggle and you have to fall down just get up and 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 um, and try again. I think it's very important to keep up the optimism, especially when, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. That's, that's the, the motto that I, I um, very much favor. And especially for the young women out there, I think it's great if you, if you, if you have the wish to be able to go out and, and um, career, uh, you know, follow a career of higher education, um, it's fantastic to expose yourself um, and learn different things because this helps not only you but also the next generation that is coming after you. Uh, so I think overall, uh, if we can build, um, you know, overall level of education um, uh, in Pakistan to to uh, a higher level, this will be very much benefiting also the country a lot. And so I think investing in education is the best gift you can give to the next generation. So uh, we should start from ourselves um, doing better. Thank you so much, Dr. Afri. We are delighted to conduct this interview with you. It was a very big honor for us. And thank you once again for giving us your valuable time and inspiring young Pakistanis. With that, feel and dunk, Alf Peter Zane, and goodbye. Thank you very much. Uh, and thanks a lot for the interview. It was also a pleasure.